big star out of me. Hello and welcome back to Meet Me at the Movies. Noel T. Manning II here, uh, hanging out talking movies. Uh, I got Tim Foster back there on the Tim Cam. Uh, he's a little lonely now, but he does have Elvis Nomely. Uh, Elvis Nomely with him, keeping you non lonely. Behind you, Tim. Behind that you. Behind, he's you. behind you. Yep, there you go. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thomas is not back there. Thomas is back here in the studio with us. Thomas Manning, uh, student film critic. Good to see you, man. Thanks hey, good to see you, too. Uh, Greg Tillman uh, over there beside camera one. For, for years, I thought you guys were related. I had no idea <laughs> no, that you no, were. I, no relation. It's no, crazy, isn't it? Does his mother know that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we can ask her. We can ask her. Uh, and, and by the way, uh, for my amazing wife, Happy 25th anniversary. Thank you for putting Aww. up with me for so, so long. Uh, she recommended that we bring out the Manning Minute from 25 <laughs> years ago when I was dressed in the wedding dress. Ah, you, so, look, you um, looked glowing that day. <laughs> it was remember. beautiful. Could not believe that Chadwick's at the time, Chadwick's bridal. She looked better in the wedding dress than you did. She did. But and it wasn't the same dress. We should probably clarify. But my shoes, remember the shoes they found for me? They actually found size 13. No, I, I try not to it remember. It was crazy. Yeah, it yeah. was crazy. But Thomas, we're glad you're here. Uh, you were also a contributor, <laughs> contributing writer for, to Elements of Madness, Douglas Davidson's uh, um, magazine, a video. No, it's not a, it's not a video magazine. It's a website. It's, it's a website. website. Yeah. Thank you, sir, for correcting me there. Uh, you're a contributor to that. You've also got your own uh, blog where you post movie reviews and a vlog. That is where, correct. Where you do that. So any any comments you want to make about those? Oh uh, yeah. Can find them? You can find me on uh, somewhere on WordPress. Uh, the, it's, <laughs> I believe it is themoviebreakdown.com. <laughs> so you can find me on there. That's my blog. You can also find me on YouTube. Uh, my YouTube channel is Thomas Manning's Rundown on Movies. Okay. So. All right. So it's easy to find. Right. And you might even have guest cameo appearances from people that'll show up uh, and help you give movie reviews from correct. time to time. Yeah, including uh, Noel Manning. No relation though. <laughs> you can afford him. <laughs> That's tough. Well, let's talk about. Uh, we're, we're talking about indie films and talking about film festivals with Violet, who was on the show. We do appreciate Violet again. Uh, and you and I are going to kind of keep that going with a Sony Classics film um, that's called uh, Fall of the American Empire. This is a foreign language film. It's a French-Canadian film, and uh, it's, uh, it's an indie film. It is going to be making, uh, it is making circuit, uh, the festival circuits already, uh, and it's already making theatrical runs slowly. So let's get your thoughts on this. You, here's this 19-year-old kid who loves watching indie film, he loves watching foreign language film. He loves watching short films and documentaries. So we're glad to have you. That's that's an unusual, I think. Uh, yeah. I think I get it yeah. from my dad. But I don't know. <laughs> we'll talk to that guy. Yeah. Smart guy. Yeah. Smart, smart guy. Yeah. So let's get your thoughts on this film. The um, storyline. There's this guy who is kind of a UPS type driver in Canada. He comes upon a robbery uh, in progress, and uh, the robbers get shot, and then there's money left, and he says, "Hmm." What should I do with it? Take it or leave it? Hmm. He takes he it. He takes it, of course. So uh, dive in. So this is from a uh, director, uh, Denis Arcon. I pronounced that correctly, I promise. That's <laughs> and impressive. He that is, is impressive. A, he's actually an Oscar-winning director. He won an Oscar back in 2003. So he, 15 years later, he's still cranking out some new stuff. And uh, like you just set the premise right there. And it's a really, really interesting kind of character study of this. He's a really quirky character. He's uh, like a philosopher genius almost. He's got his doctorate in philosophy, uh, like Mr. Douglas Davidson, like we talked about. Um, and you see uh, how he turned out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, when he comes across this money, he starts asking a lot of deep philosophical questions. Uh, is, was this some divine providence? Uh, he'd kind of been stuck in this rut, going through some rough patches. He was almost depressed and lonely. And uh, he finds this and he's like, well, this might be a sign. Um, and so then he gets kind of caught up in a lot of different plot threads and storylines that come together. And uh, this money he's kind of got, it's basically the mob's money. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I would, I would liken this, it's got a lot of Quentin Tarantino elements to it where it's just a lot of slow developing dialogue, just people having a conversation and it fits perfectly within the context of the movie. You kind of understand what the characters are going through and uh, the dialogue is really well written. And then some of these scenes are just interrupted with this brutal violence. Uh, it's not quite as you know gory as yeah. your Tarantino stuff, right. but there is that one scene in particular yeah. that you'll know it when you see it. Yeah. It's, it's tough to watch. It's, it's, a, it's a good film. You, oh, you really, yeah. really enjoyed this. It is. Uh, I'm settling right around the B grade for it. Uh, I usually rate my, rate my movies on a scale of like You're A to F. You're a card. That's so, what we do here too. Yeah, yeah. So right about a B. Um, yeah. 
So, have, I, I saw it be for me as well. I, I think one of the things that I loved about it is you really develop a liking for this character who finds the money. Um, we've talked about Blake Snyder and the, the screenwriter who, who wrote right. the Save the Book series. And one of the things he talks about is you want to set up your hero uh, as somebody that's likable from the beginning. Get yeah. them to save a cat or do yeah. something that's likable. And, and Thomas, he does this throughout the film. Not saving a cat, but he does things that are likable. Uh, we're going to talk uh, about a simple plan, diving into a free trip to Egypt. Free Trip to Egypt is a documentary, and uh, the, the premise is, is pretty simple. Uh, there's this guy uh, who decides to offer people a free trip to Egypt, all expenses paid, if they will go and have a dialogue about faith, a dialogue about social aspects of life, and really about how we live with each other. Is that the, the, the simple way of telling the story? Oh uh, Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, there's this man, he's... Uh... He's from Egyptian descent, uh, and he's actually a Swiss citizen right now. He was born in Canada. So he, he's been all over the place, of course, and uh, he is a member of the uh, Islam faith, or Islamic faith, and he brings together people of all different religions. You've got uh, a Jewish couple, an older couple. Uh, you've got a trio of conservative Christians and a handful of others, and they just all come together, and you know, different races, cultures, backgrounds, religions, and they all come together to Egypt, and the probably the one of the biggest challenges was convincing these people that this wasn't some scam or anything. Uh, just yeah. some man offers you a free trip to Egypt. There's a lot of things that could go wrong there. Yeah, and, 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 and you know, early on, you see him going to a, 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 a Donald Trump rally. This is before Donald Trump was elected, so it was one of those pre-presidential rallies, and he's trying to get people to, to join him. And he does. He gets uh, he gets one guy that'll join him who's former military, and also gets a police officer who was working the event to come with him on this trip to Egypt. Uh, it was a fascinating, to me, a fascinating character study of real life, and um, you see these uh, organic relationships start to form. You see the divisions that are there showing up. And what are some of the other things that really uh, impressed you about watching this unfold and the way the, the story was told? Uh, you could really, they really dived into some of the backgrounds of the characters and some of their, or the real people, not characters, real people, and some of their uh, really tough past experiences. Uh, some scenes are really heartbreaking to watch as certain people tell their stories and tell the things that they've been through. And really at the core of it is just, you know, we're all human and yes. all these people are human and they might have different beliefs, different ideologies. But at the end of the day, they're, they all have the same basic goals in life, and uh, it was really um, inspiring to watch that unfold. Yeah, there was there was one woman in particular. Um, one of the uh, she was part of the Jewish couple, and you know she talked about growing up, kind of loving everybody. She grew up in the, the hippie days, and she was you know as as far out there as you could be with the free love and and everything that related to that. She said, but after 9/11 happened. She said she became the worst racist that she could imagine. And she, that's why she wanted to come and be a part of this to see if there could be changes in the way she reacted. To reset her bearings, yeah, in a sense. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it was fascinating to watch her journey. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and really fascinating to watch the journey of several of the others as well. Other thoughts you want to make sure you dive in and, and share about this particular movie? Um, you could really just see some, some of these people's hearts were really changed over yeah. the course of the trip. Um, and I almost wish that we could have seen an extra 20 to 30 minutes of this. Uh, it was right at an hour and a half long. Yeah. And I feel like they could have even dived in deeper. Uh, of course, that's probably budgetary constraints, right. logistical constraints. Uh, but what we did get was really empowering. And yeah. uh, I I would love to see more. What was your rating for this? Uh, I gave it a solid B plus. Yeah, I, I gave it a solid B. I, I really enjoyed it as well. Uh, I, I, I did not feel it was too long. I felt you could have added more to it. I did feel like it ended a little oddly, um, but that was really one of the few drawbacks I had. But a you know, feature length documentary, that's tough to watch for some people, but yeah. fascinating, yeah. fascinating. You know, we're, we're actually in a kind of a golden age for documentaries, are we? I mean, I just not that long ago, you had Errol, Mor Errol Morris and Michael Moore, and that was about it. Yeah. But now there's great documentaries popping up all the time, all the time. everywhere. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you got a chance to watch that. Uh, quickly, I want to just make sure we talk about this uh, other film called Sides of the Horn. Uh, it is a 17-minute short film. It's not a documentary, but it's do got documentary elements. It looks at the... Um, 
the poaching trade for rhinos in Africa. And it looks at uh, those who are on the side of wanting to basically take the rhinos for all they're worth so they can have money for their families. And then those who are trying to protect the species and protect, protect what's right. From the very opening shot, you just see this wide shot of the African savanna, basically, and you hear the rustling of the grass, the blowing of the wind over it, and all the crickets and uh, birds and everything. So you can, it really feels authentic to the African environment. It was a very thought-provoking story. Uh, you've got one man who's basically doing a very illegal activity, but he's doing it to provide for his family because they're incredibly poverty-stricken and. They're star basically starving to death, and his wife is sick, and he feels this is the only way to support his family is to hunt rhinos for their uh, ivory, and if he doesn't do that, then he... Then what's going to happen to his yeah, family? Yeah, exactly. And then on the other side, you've got the man, uh, his brother, who's... He's, he's a ranger, and his job is to protect the rhinos, but at what does he do when his brother gets in the way of that? Right. Uh, when that's his family too. Yeah. And it was just very, uh, it really made you think about some things. It was a wonderful story. I mean, it's, it's amazing that in a 17 minute film, you can capture so many emotions, so much quality filmmaking and just an amazing piece. Where can you find this film? There's a website um, and uh, I will send you that and you can put that online. Right. It's, uh, it's a, uh, you can find it. You can also find interviews with the filmmakers, uh, but I'll make sure I share that with you. But it's called Sides of the Horn. Uh, if you want to check it out and, uh, and, and reach out and see that. It's making the festival circuits and a solid, solid film, uh, a solid A rating for me for this film. Uh, yeah, I'm right there with you, A. A rating. Thomas, yeah. thanks for being here. We'll, we'll have you back uh, some this summer as well. Any final thoughts, uh, Greg? No, I just, I, for years, I thought you guys were related. I'm still, <laughs> mine's still kind of blown still from that. Still processing. I, yeah, yeah. So is Catherine related to either of you guys? Uh, who? Uh, never mind. Okay. No. <laughs> I'm just glad I don't have to get you anything for your anniversary. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah, or Father's Day, right? Yeah, Father's Day. <laughs> Thank you, just Well, Thomas, thanks for being here. Uh, elementsofmadness.com is where you can find uh, some of his written reviews. And uh, also, you can uh, search for him uh, for uh, YouTube. And uh, there's a blog he's got. He's somewhere on WordPress. Uh, we'll, make sure we, we'll make sure we get the, uh, the right time if we get you back next time. Quote of the week, we will uh, leave you with a quote of the week. This comes from the Netflix film that I really like that I've been talking about called Always My Maybe. You know, at some point in life, all of us have to take a chance on something. Really like that. So don't always play it safe is what that quote has to say. Tim, back there on the Tim Cam, you're looking solid. You're looking great this week, man. You look crystal clear. Uh, I, I just, I don't even know what to say, man. It's the temptation eyes are getting stronger every single day. Was that new high resolution camera a good idea? For I don't Tim? know. I don't know. But for Elvis Nomsley, he's looking, uh, he's looking uh, pointedly uh, awesome this, this week. Well, till next time, we really appreciate it. You can email us at info at c19.tv, and you can download the podcast at wgwg.org. If you want to look at this online, you can do that at c19.tv. Till next time, for everybody here at the Media of the Movies uh, cast and crew from the studios here at C19, that's a wrap. Happy